A10VSO DFLR is a variable displacement axial piston pump. It features pressure, flow, and power control, enabling efficient regulation of system demands while optimizing energy use. In my last two videos, I explained how DFR control works. Since DFLR's load sensing and pressure control work the same as DFR, this video will focus only on the power control part. Power control limits pump power to protect the engine motor from overload by ensuring pump power is less than or equal to engine motor power. Pump power equals pressure multiplied by volumetric flow rate. When the pump power reaches the maximum allowed, the control reduces flow as pressure rises to ensure that pressure multiplied by flow rate remains below the motor power. The LS control section is similar to DFR control with the difference that the LS signal line passes through an orifice before entering the LS spring chamber. After entering, it exits the chamber again and connects to the power control regulator. Inside the power control regulator, there is a spool that can move freely along an axis. However, its movement is restricted by a pin. This pin is connected to the swash plate and moves upward and downward as the swash plate's angle changes. A spring pushes the spool and holds it against the pin. Therefore, as the swash plate moves, the spool also moves. There is another spool inside this spool. One end of this spool is connected to the spring of the larger spool, and the other end is connected to another pair of springs. Both spring chambers at the ends of the spools are connected to the pump housing via passages inside the larger spool, resulting in nearly zero pressure in these chambers. The LS signal line enters the power regulator and via a passage in the larger spool reaches the center of the smaller spool. One side of the smaller spool has a slightly smaller cross-sectional area than the other. As a result, sufficient oil pressure can move the spool and compress the springs. Here, we have a relief valve that opens at a specified pressure and prevents the pressure from increasing further by connecting it to the tank. So the pressure in the LS spring chamber is controlled by this relief valve. Now let's examine the power control operation step by step. When system pressure increases, the pressure in the LS spring chamber and the input pressure to the power regulator also rise. Until the system pressure reaches the threshold that opens the relief valve inside the power regulator, the system pressure and the LS spring chamber pressure remain equal. Once the relief valve opens, the LS spring chamber pressure no longer increases. But the system pressure continues to rise, creating a pressure differential across the LS spool. This pressure differential causes the LS spool to move, connecting the pump's output pressure to the control piston. Since the control piston has a larger cross-section than the bias piston, it pushes the swash plate and reduces its angle. As the swash plate angle decreases, the power regulator's large spool starts to move, closing the relief valve and raising LS spring chamber pressure. As LS chamber pressure increases, the pressure differential across the LS spool decreases allowing the spring to push the LS spool. The increase in pressure in the LS spring chamber is sufficient to position the LS spool such that the control piston pressure maintains the swash plate angle in a constant position. 
As observed, when the output pressure increases, the pump's flow rate decreases to ensure the pump's power does not exceed a specified limit. Now let's increase the output pressure and follow the steps again. Since the LS chamber is connected to the relief valve, its pressure does not change even as the output pressure increases. Therefore, a pressure differential is created across the LS spool, causing it to move and connect the control piston to the output pressure. The control piston pushes the swash plate and reduces its angle. As the servo piston angle decreases, the relief valve closes, causing the LS spring chamber pressure to rise until the relief valve reopens. As the pressure differential across the LS spool decreases, the spool moves to regulate the control piston pressure, ensuring the swash plate angle remains constant. As observed, when the output pressure increases, the swash plate angle and thus the output flow rate decreases to prevent the pump power from exceeding its set limit. Now let's decrease the output pressure. As the output pressure decreases, the pressure differential across the LS spool reduces, allowing the spool spring to push and connect the control piston to the tank. When the control piston pressure drops, the bias piston pushes the swash plate, increasing its angle. As the swash plate angle decreases, the power relief valve opens, causing the LS spring chamber pressure to drop until the relief valve recloses. The pressure drop in the LS spring chamber is calibrated to create a pressure differential across the LS spool positioning it to maintain control piston pressure and stabilize the swash plate angle. So, a decrease in pressure proportionally increased the flow rate, ensuring the pump's power remained constant. All these steps occur continuously within a fraction of a second. Here, I've presented them discreetly for easier understanding.